Hey everyone, I'm back and I'm going to be talking about Dr. Sleep and this is going to be a little bit different than what I've been doing recently and I'm going to do an entire spoiler filled review because I can't really talk about this movie without getting to spoilers. So yeah. And I guess a little quick update, I haven't made any videos because why I haven't made any other videos is because I haven't really seen anything worth reviewing. I mean, I've seen Terminator, Dark Fate, and I've seen Joker, but I'll probably only review Dark Fate because I have more to say about it than I do Joker. I liked Joker. I just don't have anything to say about it. I give it like a B plus. That's all I have to say about it because everything that has been said about that movie has been said already. But you're not here for Joker. You're here for Dr. Sleep. So let's get right into spoilers. And where I'm sitting right now in this movie is kind of a C plus, B minus. I felt the best way to talk about this movie and why I feel it's like right in there is just to do my grade right out of the front, right out of the gate, and just tell you how I feel about it now. Eh, I think I'm communicating this properly, but. Anyways, what I liked about this movie, and oh, and one more thing, I'm probably going to be swapping back and forth between my positives and negatives, because I think that'll just make things easier for me. Because <laughs> I have a lot to say about Dr. Sleep. Let's get into the review. So what I liked about this movie, I liked Ewan McGregor in this movie as uh, Danny Torrance, I keep wanting to say the actor's name, uh, Danny Lloyd, from The Shining, but it's Danny Torrance. I liked him in this movie, though there was one uh, part of him that was distracting for me, and that was, like, dur during, like, the first, like, half hour of the movie, when you see him, he has his, like, beard. He looks exactly like he does in Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, when he was playing Obi-Wan Kenobi. It looks exactly the same to me. It was very distracting, and the entire time I was just thinking, you are just the voice away from being Obi-Wan Kenobi. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but aside from that, uh, he, he was really good in the movie, and I think he's probably one of the strongest aspects to the film. And overall, I don't really have a problem with any of the acting. It's just, uh, I think, mainly the script, I believe, that I have an issue with. I like the villains in this movie. I you think that they were... I understood what they were going for, the villains, pretty well. I think I... Uh, I it's safe to say that I understood their motivations. I understood what they were able to do and what they were. I liked uh, uh, one of the, when suspense was kind of building up, uh, you would hear like a heartbeat. And uh, that I liked. It always grabbed me into the film whenever I heard that. Though there is one scene in this movie that's pretty cheesy that made me just kind of laugh. <laughs> so the thing that made me laugh in this movie and I think it's the only thing that made me laugh unintentionally speaking, and that is when the main villain is uh, looking for this girl. I've, if It's a little hard to uh, describe. Uh, I said this wrong again. Uh, if you're having trouble following what I say because I don't say the characters' names, that's because uh, I'm really bad with names and sorry about that but that's my one weakness I can't remember names and I'm also not very good with plot descriptions either I often find myself giving away too much and that's why I kind of just skip over plot descriptions the thing that's uh, cheesy about this movie is when uh, the main villain is looking for the main girl in this movie who's like who has like the ability to shine stronger than anyone that they've seen. 
and uh, so she goes uh, looking for her, and uh, she's just like floating above the earth, and like Superman almost. <laughs> uh, once once I saw, I saw like when I first saw her doing it, I saw stars behind her, and I was like, oh, what? And then I saw Earth, and she was just flying above Earth, and that that made me laugh. That was. That was just too much. Ugh. I should also mention that if you're a fan of The Shining, then uh, I'm not sure how well this movie's gonna work for you because this isn't really a direct uh, vision to what Stanley Kubrick had for this universe, I guess. Hey, if you don't know, uh, Stephen King uh, and Stephen King's Vision for The Shining and Kubrick's vision of The Shining were completely different. And, uh, Stephen King wanted a more, uh, supernatural story and Kubrick wanted it to be a more, uh, psychological thriller kind of horror film. And then, I think you know the story that comes after that. At some point, King released his own miniseries, and I believe no one liked it. <laughs> I haven't seen that, but... Eh, I, I don't think I need to. But anyways, uh, this movie is pretty much a direct sequel to The Shining. It takes place... Well, not... Well, not directly after it, I, I wouldn't say. Well, technically it does, but... Yeah, he kind of just uh, jumps uh, from his him as a kid at one point to him as an adult, which that kind of felt a little weird to me, just jumping from one place to another, just like that. It didn't really help the story for me, and I kind of felt that if he just started him as an adult, that would have been fine. I guess I don't know. Maybe that was just. Kind of like, uh, the director, uh, Mike Flanagan, or whoever wrote the script, uh, was just thinking, uh, just, uh, something that would, a combination between fan service and, uh, uh taking, uh, having the movie take its time, which I guess is alright in and of itself. Even though I don't think it works as well as it should. One other problem that I have with this movie is... Aside from one scene... I'll, I'll probably just get right into it. Uh, the scene where uh, the baseball kid dies and they... <laughs> okay. So the scene where he dies, I thought that was very effective. But as far as horror goes, the rest of the movie didn't have anything to offer for me. After that uh, death scene, I didn't get any much out of the movie, to be honest. I understood what was happening. I understood, well, kind of, up until the last 30 minutes, which is the worst part of the movie. I'll get into that in a minute, but after the kid dies, this is something I want to bring up, I just... And between him dying and the last uh, act, everything in between there is, uh, it works fine. And I should also bring uh, bring this up. Uh, I really enjoyed the first act. I thought that was very well done. Uh, it uh, was building up things that I felt were going to have... Uh, I was afraid this movie was going to be just a, either really boring and filled with jump scares. And it kind of is, but it also kind of isn't. It uh, has uh, jump scares, but they're not as annoying as I expected them to be. Because they're not as over-the-top and loud. And just ridiculously crazy. <laughs> like, uh, that's all the movie had to offer. <laughs> it started out with some promise, and then as the movie goes along, it just kind of... Yeah. 
kind of just falls down as it goes along. So I guess I'll get it to right into this. This is probably a big issue for me. One, probably the biggest issue I have with the movie. And that's all in the third act. So in the third act, uh, the main villain, whatever her name was, I can't remember because I'm terrible with names. Uh, she decides to go follow both Danny and the little girl because she's after the little girl and at this point she doesn't know that Danny has the ability to shine and they're going to they're going to the Overlook Hotel where it's uh, dangerous both for them but also for her the like main villain and that's what they described it what Danny described it as. So they go there and they get into the Overlook Hotel and overall in the movie, the special effects in the movie are all right. They're passable. But once we get into the third act, everything looks so cartoonish. It just doesn't work at all. <laughs> and here's one of my biggest issues with the movie that makes absolutely no sense to me. And that is... I'll, what makes sense is that the these like uh, this organization of people that the villain is leading, the main villain, uh, they're killing uh, people who have the ability to shine because it uh, makes them because they then absorb their power and it makes them live longer. From my understanding, as long as they eat well, sleep well, and uh, some other things I can't remember right now. So they need to do that, and that I understood. They just want to live forever, basically. But where I have a problem with it is the Overlook Hotel. <laughs> what do they want? Because apparently uh, Danny was keeping them locked in boxes they had in his mind, and once uh, the main villain is, like, torturing him, uh, he just lets them out and they completely go after the main villain and kill her and absorb all her power, but then they go back to Danny, and my question is, uh, what do they want from Danny? I know from the book, The Shining, I, I didn't really look far into it, but the reason why uh, in the book, uh, they wanted Danny dead because they wanted to absorb his power. I, I never looked into why, but I just knew that's what they wanted to do. But the problem is this movie never told gave us any reasons as to why they would do that and if you're fresh off of the Kubrick film then you wouldn't understand why they're going after Danny all too well and it just becomes like a mess and then the ghost possess Danny and then Danny goes to kill the little girl just like in The Shining and it just becomes stupid, and I, I liked uh, when uh, Danny's whole death scene, that I liked. I thought that was well executed. I think that's all I have to say about Dr. Sleep. Uh, would I recommend this movie? It's worth a shot. If you're a fan of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, I'm not sure if you're going to enjoy this movie. You might simply because of the fan service that it has in it. If you're a fan of uh, Stephen King's uh, vision of The Shining, then you'll probably enjoy this movie. Everyone else, I don't know. So, I'll give this movie probably a C+. I'm very split on it. There are things I really like about it, things that I don't. It's a mixed bag, so... There's my review for Dr. Sleep. And if you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below what you thought of Dr. Sleep down below. I'll... If you disagree with me, that's fine. If you enjoy Dr. Sleep, I know a lot of people have. I don't hate this movie, I just... It's kind of a mixed bag. If you enjoyed this review, thank you for watching, and have a great day.